Hi folks, Trish here from Coop's Corner, and I'm here tonight to talk to you about Miss Lillian's mood paint. So the mood paint comes in a little canister like this, and inside of the canister you will find this little bag of magic. So this is the milk paint powder, and the milk paint powder will last indefinitely as long as it's not mixed. So it needs to be mixed with water, not milk. A lot of people are confused about that. So I'm going to be showing you how we go about mixing the milk paint. So inside there's also a little package of directions just in case you forget. So those are inside of the tin as well. So I have already mixed up some black, so I'm not going to mix that up because normally what you want to do is you want to mix it up and then maybe get your piece clean wipe it down, do some of that. You want to give it about 10 minutes. That will help the paint um, thicken, do its little magic that it's going to do. So we're going to start off, we're going to mix up one of my favorite colors is Just Ducky. It's very similar in color to the Miss Lillian Snow Wax Chalk Paint color, Just Ducky. And I was out on the road, so I took it out of my little tin and I just stuck in one of these baggies. So I like to start out with a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, and then add a little bit more water if I want to. Um, depending on what the surface is, and we'll go through that. Um, and we'll also talk about when to use Extra Bond and what it is. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put just one scoop. So you wanna mix up just the amount that you're going to be needing for your project, um, because it will go bad. I find that if you, if you have some left over, as long as you haven't added any extra bond, you can cover it and put it in the refrigerator and it'll last for a week, maybe a little bit more. Sometimes when I take it out, I'll let it get to room temperature and then stir it. Sometimes it's thickened up over time with the chill from the refrigerator and I'll add a little bit more warm water. Um, so you wanna take your milk paint powder and put the powder in first and then add the water um, and then I feel like you have more control over it so we're just gonna mix some warm water you can mix it with hot it's just it's not it doesn't mix right if you use cold water it's kind of like trying to make a recipe and using cold butter it just won't it just won't do it so um, so you want to mix it up really good um, and if you could, um, while I'm mixing this up, if you could like and share the video. And then at the end of this live, we will um, be giving away a eight ounce bottle of Miss Lillian's No Wax Shock Paint. So, um, so you wanna make sure you go in and like and share the video. And um, milk paint is one of those things that until you kind of understand it and get to play around with it it's a little bit tricky so I hope that tonight I can I can get you to uh, just want to try it out because to me it's awesome so this is the just ducky so this is what it looks like when it gets mixed up so when it's first mixed it looks a little lumpy and uh, it might look a little bit thin like I said I just mixed a one-to-one -one ratio they normally say to do two parts of paint to three parts water um, but I like to mix it equal parts um, and then go from there so I'm gonna set this aside and we're gonna let it do its thing and um, get that stood up here so it doesn't fall over on my counter okay so this is what the paint looks like after it's sat for 10 minutes so this is the black called inkwell so it's all mixed up it's kind of gotten its little thickness and this is really the consistency that you're looking for they call it kind of a melted milkshake kind of consistency it's not too runny but it's not too thick um, I find that if you're painting on bare wood you may want to add a little bit more water and that will help it spread a little bit better um, so let's get started so first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a board and we're going to paint this board black and the reason why I'm going to paint it black is I like to see the contrast like if you look at <clears throat> excuse me 
So this is a frame that I did a while back. And if you notice, I don't know if you can see, if you, okay, there you go. You can see the cracking. And so this was just a plain wood board. And then I painted it with um, Miss Lillian's Moo Paint in Jacobian, which is a really nice dark brown. And, um, and then I added a little, a little bit of snowflake in there as well. So I'd have some parts with black, some parts with white. And then I put over country blue over the top. So that's what we're going to be doing on this first board is kind of talking about painting on um, bare board and then how to get that chippy look on something that hasn't been previously finished. Something that's, um, that's already got a finish on it or it's got maybe a little bit of gloss like this. We'll do this also. Um, so if it's a little bit glossy, you can do a couple different things. You can either um, take just a little 220 and kind of scuff it, and that will help the paint adhere a little bit better, and it also will, um, I like to do, like you can do that, or another thing you can do, which I do, is I add a little bit of extra bond. And I like to add just a little bit because I still want it to chip. So we're gonna do, we're gonna put a little bit of milk paint, the um, inkwell on this first, and then we'll set this one aside, and then we'll do maybe one side with just the, the milk paint the way it is. And then the other side, we'll mix some extra bond, just a little bit so we get some chipping, and then we'll see, we'll kind of play around with it and experiment and see, did it completely flake off on the side that we didn't use any extra bond? Milk paint has a mind of its own, and that's kind of the fun thing, is you never know exactly what you're gonna get, so it's kind of a surprise. So let's get started. So, and if you're just tuning in, we're just using some Inkwell milk paint from Miss Lillian's. So if you can see, when I put it on, let me see if I can move these comments out of here. All I see is comments at the bottom, so I hope you can see this. So, see how it kind of like drags a little bit? That's because it's the wood is so dry that it's soaking up the milk paint powder. So what I'll do is I'll mist it with a little bit of water. And then, it, see how easy that is to move it? And now it's not just kind of like, not moving very well. So. So we're gonna go ahead and hit this with this really nice black milk paint. I love the black milk paint. And another fun thing too that you can do with milk paint is you can add a little bit more water to it and you can make like a stained look too, which is really fun. Okay, get a little bit more milk paint on here. I love milk paint. It really gives you an old, grungy, kind of old-fashioned look. It's beautiful on primitive pieces. So this shows you how you can make it look like a stain when you add more water, or you can use it full strength with just a little added extra water because it's um, an absorbent for throw that in the sink here. And um, let's see here. So now, Let's move that aside, and then we'll take some of that black that we mixed up. And I don't want to add extra bond to all of this, um, so I'm just going to put some in a little dish and then add some extra bond. Um, and the reason for that is we're going to be putting some black on some other pieces, and they don't all need extra bond. So let me get another little cup here. So we're going to add just a little, little bit of this, because we don't need that much on this. Maybe a little bit more than that. Okay. I'm going to use my little stir stick. And then let's go ahead and get it open. There it is. Okay. So move the hat. And then we're just going to add a little bit of 
Miss Lillian's extra bond into our paint mixture. And the extra bond helps the paint stick on glossy surfaces. Um, so that's why we're going to put some on um, on our little piece of wood here. It's really great like if you're if you wanted to paint glass and do like some of those cute little milk bottles and things. It's really uh, you want to put the extra bond in there because otherwise it might just chip and flake because it's glass is so cold and so slick and you can't stuff it. So we're just going to mix it up and add a little bit of that extra bond in there. Okay. Let me cover this up here so I don't spill it. And on there. So, so let's see. We'll do the side that has the little blue mark is going to be the side that we're going to mix with on the extra bond side. And then the other side will do it without, and then we'll see what happens. We'll see if we get tons of chipping or not so much. And if you're just tuning in, we're doing a demonstration on using Miss Lillian's Moo paint. It's the milk paint that we carry. Um, and so when you're painting it on, when you're painting it on a slick surface, you may even kind of see that it kind of slides a little bit. So it's almost like that first coat with the extra bond is almost like a tack coat. It's kind of giving it some tooth, giving it something for the paint to stick to. And then, oh, that was nice. At least it didn't land on my countertop. Okay, so we'll set that aside here. Then I'm gonna move that one over and then we will get where did I put the other one that's already mixed? Oh, here it is. So this is our milk paint without the extra bond. And then we'll put that on the other side. So you can see the difference. And you can even see when you're painting on a slick surface without the extra bond, it kind of streaks a little bit because it's almost like it's sliding off a little bit. But if you're looking for a super chippy kind of look, you might really like that. So we're just gonna, I was gonna say we could set it aside, but I, we can also do something else that's really fun to do. <clears throat> we're gonna hit it up with a heat gun. <laughs> So if you have your speakers on high, you might want to turn them down for this. It's not really loud. I'm just using an embossing gun for scrapbooking. You can use a heat gun. You can use a hair dryer. If you use a blow dryer, you want to use the lowest, uh, the lowest, uh, um, the lowest setting so you get more heat and not all the air because the air will just start blowing it too much and you want to just get a concentrated amount of heat so this is the only time it's ever fun to watch paint dry sometimes you might get some crackling in that first coat sometimes it doesn't happen until the second coat so this is the side without the extra bond this is the side we just did and you can actually even put this outside if you put a piece of furniture that you've painted with milk paint and it's damp, put it outside on a sunny day and it will crackle and ship and you don't have to do this. You don't have to necessarily do this, but this kind of helps encourage it because milk paint has a, has a mind of its own and this kind of coaxes it to do what you want it to do. So, all right, I'm going to turn this back on. So we have a little bit of crackling. I don't know if you can see it in the camera that much, 
but when we put our second coat on, you'll be able to see it some more. So now what I want to do, let's see, let's go back to, let's go back to this one and see if this is dry. It's pretty much dry. So now what we're going to do on this one that we just put the black milk paint on, we're going to give it a layered look. And so this is what I like to do. I like to start out with a dark color because I like to see the contrast like I had in this picture frame where you can see this really cool, chippy, crackly kind of look to it. And so I like to start out with a dark color and then use a light color over the top. So there's a couple different things you can use. You can use some spray shellac and the spray shellac will act as a resist and it will help with the cracking and the chipping and all that stuff. Um, but it's kind of smelly to use in the house. So, um, so instead of using that in the house, another option is to get a can of shellac. Now, my little can of shellac is long gone because I use so much of it because I use a lot of milk paint that now I buy it by the gallon. So I just put it in a little glass jar that I had. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put this directly on top of our dried paint. And this will act as a resist. I don't know why. Hold on a second. Sorry about that, folks. School's calling, and I don't know why. They wouldn't be canceling school on a beautiful day like today. Okay. So we're just going to be putting some of this on here. And I find that if you use, if you use the spray shellac, uh, maybe I'll open up a window and I'll show you. But I find that if you use the spray shellac, you get more of a finer, because it, it ends up being a finer mist, so you get more of a fragile crackle. If you use the brush on, you can really kind of puddle it on there and really get some big cracks and chips. Um, and what I like is with milk paint, when you do get that cracking and chipping, it looks authentic. Where if you were to um, put on something to kind of make it crackle, a lot of times people will go, oh, well, if I have crackle here, I've got to put it here. And then if I put it here, I want to put it here. And then they start making it look too, too obvious and too forced. And then it doesn't look natural. So, oh gosh, I got to show you though. Look at how pretty that side is where we did the stain look. Gosh, that's cool. And then it looks a little bit dry right now, but that is because milk paint has a drier texture to it once it dries, and then it has to be sealed. So unlike the Miss Lillian's No Wax chalk paint that has a sealer, this does not. So this does need to be sealed, and you would not want to seal it with shellac because that would be a hot mess. So, but you can kind of see, though, if you put a sealer on it, how pretty that stain side is. So now we're just gonna hit this with a heat gun just to speed it up so that we're not sitting here waiting for so long. And then we'll put some, put a contrasting color over the top. And it dries fairly quickly. As it dries, it starts to get kind of milky looking. The shellac, I should say, looks kind of milky. Okay, it's a little bit tacky, but not bad, just to kind of give you an idea. All right, so now let's take my favorite, just stucky. So now this has been sitting for a good 10 minutes, a little longer. So now the milk paint has done its thing. See, it's got that nice consistency. It's not too thin, it's not too thick. If it's too thin, you add a little bit of milk powder to it. If it's too, if it's too, 
thick, then you just add a little bit more water to it. And what I'll do is I'll just keep a little mister or a spray bottle, so if it is a little bit thick, you can just add a squirt or two. Sometimes if you go and add some from the faucet, you may end up adding too much, and then you gotta add more powder. And then you may have added way too much powder, and you don't wanna keep doing that back and forth. So, all right, so now this is gonna be fun. So we'll set that aside. All right, so now we're just gonna take one of these little chip brushes, and we're going to take our milk paint, and if you could like and share the video, and then um, you will be entered into a contest, and at the end of this live video, we'll draw a winner for a free eight ounce bottle of Miss Lillian Snow Wax chalk paint. Awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and put this on. Let's see if you can see this. And one thing that's cool is you could even go and leave it with a little bit of those streaks and it really gives it a really aged look. And then once it dries, you'll see all the crackling and chipping and flaking. And the longer you let it sit, you may get some more crackling and chipping on top of it. And you can do multiple colors this way also. You could, um, you could do this and then put a little bit of um, another layer of shellac and then um, do another layer, or you can use the layering wax bar, which I'm gonna show you that next. And the layering wax bar is awesome with milk paint. Okay, so show you what that looks like. So here is the wet milk paint. So this is just Ducky going over inkwell. So let me see if I can turn it this way so you can watch what happens. Stop for a second so you can see. See right over here? We've already got some crackling going on. Hope I'm not boring you too much with drying this, but can you see as it's drying, it's getting these cracks and things. So these ones are forming cracks. You can start to see the cracks in there. The paint just hasn't completely separated. Well, it will as it starts to dry, like these ones over here. But see how it's like you get some, move it up. You get some bigger cracks and some finer cracks. And it just looks, just looks realistic. So we'll hit this a little bit more so you can kind of get to see the fun stuff that you get with this. So let's do this part up here that has the cracking, but hasn't separated. See that right before your eyes? It's already cracked and you can see the black underlayer. So you can see why I like to use the black because you get that nice contrast. And 
And then I'm going to show you something else. Right here, we have some flaking going on. And that will just flake off. There it goes. See? And you'll be able to see because it'll start coming up from your surface. So you'll get some flakes. And the flakes, that's what you see in old furniture. You'll see the crackling and the flaking. And So let's do a little bit more. so you can see a little bit better some more of the cracking and chipping that we got <clears throat> so now what I'm going to show you um, so normally you would let this sit and um, you could even put a second coat on if you wanted to but sometimes it, I mean if you're doing a weathered kind of aged look you, I think it looks I, I think it looks nice in some instances when you um, when you don't have just solid coverage and then they flake some things. I like, I like this look. So what you would do is, say this was all done and you have it just the way you want it, then you can go and, um, what is the base color? The base color that's on here is Inkwell, which is this one right here. Inkwell, Miss Lillian's Mood Paint. So we used Inkwell first now extra bond because this is just bare wood and we add a little extra water because the wood is so absorbent because it doesn't have a sealer or anything on there so we went and did just that and then the top layer is just stucky in Miss Lillian's milk paint so now you could if you wanted to you can kind of sand it and distress it do anything like that um, and once you would have it all done, I'll show you what it would look like. So say you, you go, okay, we're completely done and we're going to seal it. So now you can put on a little hemp oil or you could use one of the Miss Lillian's top coats. Maybe the um, Black Luster would probably be the best choice because if you look at old furniture, it generally isn't glossy. It's usually pretty matte looking, but I find that the hemp oil gives just a really, really beautiful finish. And all you really do is you can mix, you can just put it on with your fingers because this stuff is food grade. It's not gonna hurt you. You can even put it on your cuticles. <laughs> so you can put it on this way or you can even just take a brush and you can work it in. And this will act as your sealer. And then what I normally do is I will put it on and then really let it absorb maybe 15 or 20 minutes and then I'll wipe off the excess. And another thing you can do with the hemp oil is you can use that as a resist. So maybe what we'll do is on this side that we don't have, that I didn't put any hemp oil, I only put it up to this side. We'll take a little bit of hemp oil and we'll put some in just a few places on here to act as a resist. And then we'll take... The layering wax bar. I love this stuff. And so we do have some cracking and chipping, if I can talk. So I want to maybe put a little bit of this layering wax bar over some of these areas and some of the areas where we have the black coming through. Because we really want that paint to chip off and flake off in those areas. Maybe I'll add a little bit more hemp oil so you can kind of see the difference of using hemp oil as a resist and layering wax bar. Now, years ago, when I first started with the company, I was using the layering wax bar, and Miss Lillian herself had came to Michigan and visited me, and she taught me a trick that I'm going to share with you, in case you don't know about it, is the layering wax bar, you can heat it up with the heat gun, and what it does is when you put the layering wax bar on, you'll kind of sometimes see some straight lines. You hit it with the heat gun, 
so it takes all the straight lines out makes it look really natural and awesome so uh, the camera will pick it up but it gets see you can see it gets a little shiny where the layering wax bar is and that's all it takes so if you look you can definitely you can see in the light you can see the shiny areas so those shiny areas is where that layering wax bar is okay so now we want to do a contrasting color on there so we're going to use this uh it's called tuscan red i think it's called tuscan red tuscan red tuscan clay tuscan clay there you go all right so as you can see this has been mixed up and it's been sitting for a while and it's nice and thick and it's just the consistency what we want and another thing you should do is periodically it's good to give it a stir um, because the milk paint powder has all of these pieces of um, uh, paint pigment my brain's not working so even in a light color like this the just ducky you might see a little bit of like a cobalt blue and a canary yellow in there and you want to make sure you mix that up otherwise you may end up sometimes finding like a cobalt blue streak or a, a really bright green piece kind of looks kind of cool to me but to each their own so now we're going to put this on this side so you get to see what happens with the layering wax bar and you might, I mean, this, these two colors, I think, would look really cool together, but the possibilities are endless on your colors. Um, but for the sake of the video, I like to use something with some contrast so you can really get to see the difference. So we're just going to go ahead and put this on. And this is the Tuscan clay color. It's really pretty. It's sort of a, a redder version of a terracotta pot. It has just a tinge of orange to it. It's really cool. Oh, and then you can see where it's already pulling away because that paint does not want to stick to that layering wax bar. Awesome. Love it. And even where the hemp oil is that we put it on just really faint. It's coming away. Oops, sorry. It's off the camera. There we go. So now we're going to heat it up with our heat gun just so we can get it dry and encourage the cracking. Um, I find that if you, if you, um, if you're trying to get it to crackle and chip and it doesn't want to hit it with the heat gun first. And if it still isn't really cracking the amount that you want you can mist it with a little bit of water and that will reactivate your milk paint and you and then put it in the sun hit it with a heat gun and by doing that you may get some more cracking and chipping so here we go See, just like that, we've already got here. We've already got some cracking going on. So you can see that blue color coming through. And I love when you can get this cool texture going on. I don't know if you can see that. See that texture? It's not just flat because flat to me just looks it looks new. I like the texture. The texture to me looks old and grungy. So now we're going to go back and we're going to hit this and get this dried so we can get to see what it looks like.
love I love fast results. That's pretty fast. We've already got this cool chippy crackled look with this I keep showing the other way with the blue coming through. I think that's awesome. So we'll dry it a little bit more and then we'll go on to something else. Oh, and right here where we got some flaking before, let's flake in some more. Awesome, love it. So we've got some of that inkwell, which was our base color, the Just Ducky milk paint, and then the Tuscan clay on top of it. That's really cool. I love how you get, see how the crackles are very random and you've got some finer pieces and some wider cracks. And then we're gonna let this sit and then we will do, we'll do something else. But it's cool, like you can uh, you can feel this texture. I wish you could feel where the layering wax bar is. There is there's a definite texture to it. I don't know if the camera's picking it up very well. And please like and share this um, live, and then you'll be entered in to win an eight ounce bottle of Miss Lillian's original no wax chalk paint. Okay, so that's all dry. So now one thing that you can do, once it's dry, you can take a scraper and you can start scraping off some of that paint where the tire and wax bar is. So you can see the difference of where we used the hemp oil versus where the layering wax bar is. The hemp oil does give you a little bit of resist, but not, it, although I did put it on kind of light, but it doesn't seem to give you quite as much as the layering wax bar. I love that stuff. And it's the layering wax bar. You can do this also with Miss Lillian's original No Wax Chalk Paint. You can do the same thing. You can put it on, put a base color down. Once it's dry, put the layering wax bar on, hit it with the hair dryer or something just to kind of melt that wax on there and then put a contrasting color over it let that dry and then you can go over it with a scraper you can go over it with an old credit card anything and it'll just scrape off i just think that is such a cool look pretty cool okay so now other thing that was going to show you let's see well, let's take a look and see if we we didn't put a second coat on this but I can see a little bit of cracking going on in here but not that much so let's see which one was which maybe we'll do oh we got some of the blue left I love this blue we'll do a little bit of the blue over the top and we'll see what we get And so this, I painted um, one side with inkwell, the black that we used on the other test board, and added the extra bond, and the other side, we didn't use an extra bond to see if on a glossy surface, if the paint will stick without the extra bond. Sometimes it will, sometimes it won't. Um, and sometimes you may find that maybe you'll have something that's been previously finished. 
finished. Maybe you have a buffet or something and you want to do this on and it's got already a finish on it. You can just clean it and go ahead and milk paint it and, and just see what happens. You may get a lot of cracking and chipping. You might not. It, a lot of it has to depend on the glossiness of the surface. If it's really slick um, and really shiny, a lot of times it's going to crack and chip, and you may end up with more paint on the floor than you have on your piece. And then in that case, you go, okay, well, got a little bit more. I'll just add a little extra bond to it, and it's all good. Um, but it, it, in this video, I'm trying to show you kind of... Um, how to work with it, and some tips and tricks that I've kind of found over the years that work. Um, so we'll hit this one with the blow dryer and see what we've got. And then we'll be finishing up here pretty soon, so we'll be announcing our winner. So if you have not liked and shared this video, do it in the next five minutes, because we're going to be ending, and we're going to pick a winner. So if you want to win an 8-ounce bottle of Miss Lillian's original no-wax chalk paint, you better like and share. Okay. All right, I'm gonna do this one more time. I don't know if you can see this. Now we did not add any shellac to help encourage the chipping and things, but just hitting it up with the heat gun, you can start to see. Can you see that in that? I don't know if you can pick it up or not, but there is already starting some crackling going on in here. <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it. This is what I was talking about when I said a fragile crackle, where the lines are really, oh, sorry, I was off the camera. The lines are really fine. There's a little fragile crackle up on the top here, where it doesn't have the, um, the base color coming through in big cracks. That, so this is more of a fragile crackle. So that's what happens when you don't put on the shellac. So let's do this one more time. On the other side. tangled up in my cords. Now it's funny, the side that we didn't put the extra bond on for, with the, um, the ink well, the black, that side got a lot more chipping and crackling on the side that we didn't use any extra bond. So we got, I don't know why, who knows, but we got a fine crackle on the side that we did the extra bond because that side I didn't paint it all the way up so I could keep track because otherwise I would forget. And then the side that we didn't use any extra bond, we got more cracking. And see, this is more of a wider crackle. So it's pretty cool. So we'll finish drying this and then I'll show you something else. So you can see, oh, let's see if the camera's picking up. 
open it up so you can see. Maybe it's because the window in the behind me. It's pretty cool stuff. So, um, oh, and then if you are watching this in the replay, do a hashtag replay. And if you're watching this live, do a hashtag live. Then we can kind of see how many people are tuning in and how many people are tuning in and watching our watching our replays. So I hope you are enjoying this. Um, we're about done, so we're going to be picking a winner. So if you haven't liked and shared, do it now. So you get entered in for a Miss Lillian Snow Wax chalk paint, eight ounce. Okay, one other thing I'm gonna show you that's really cool, that I love, that works really well with milk paint, before we go, is the wood stain. Have you used the water-based wood stain. This stuff is the bomb, bomb, bomb. I love it. It's wonderful as a stain. You can put it over the top of paint and it just, it really gives it a really cool look. It's different than using the glaze. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to use it on something here. So I'm going to just show you. Sometimes you know, like I like my contrast and sometimes I want to still see some of the wood grain through it, but not so much this color. So what I like to do, oh, I think that's one that's got hemp oil on it, so we don't want to use that. We use this. So I like to just kind of work it in. And what's nice about the water-based wood stain, if you're putting it on bare wood, oh man, it works awesome. And um, if you're putting it on a piece that was previously finished, you want to make sure you um, sand it down before you use it because the gel stain will penetrate, but the um, water-based stain won't penetrate through that finished sealed piece. I love my weathered, my weathered stain. So then I put that on, and I'm just going to take a paper towel, and I'll show you how pretty that looks. And then as it dries, it looks awesome. And there's a bunch of different colors. There's a really pretty, there's a silo, which is a really pretty pale gray, and um, I love the weathered. The weathered is really nice for, like, farmhouse and stuff. So... And that looks really nice with the milk paint. So I'm going to show you something with that. So let's see here. Let's do, should we do the layering wax bar one more time or should we do the shellac? Maybe we'll do the layering wax bar and we'll do it super chippy before we leave. So you see like full on crazy, craziness. I like craziness. Anybody else like craziness? What are your favorite products from Miss Lillian's? Have you been trying everything? There's so much. I mean, Melm Reactive Paints and the No Wax Chalk Paint, everybody loves that. That's, that's, that's what started it all. And Swamp Mud, my girlfriend says, if they start selling it by the gallon, she'll buy it by the gallon because she loves the Swamp Mud. I love Swamp Mud too. But there's so many products out there to play with and get, and, you don't have to just use it strictly for furniture. You can use it for accessories and all kinds of fun things. Heck, I even painted my shoes. I did a Union Jack on my shoes years ago. The paint cracked a little bit, but it still shows up. And I've worn them in the rain and everything. No sealer on it, and they're good. You can see now that it's dry. Light coming in. And you can see that layering wax bar on there, giving it some resist. So I have some Tuscan left. Maybe we'll do that. Should we do Tuscan or? So I don't want to use the black because I didn't mark which one was which. Oh, see now this is what happens with milk paint. After a while, it's got really, really thick because it's been sitting. So you just add a little bit of water to it. 
no big deal. And I'm just going to add just a little tiny bit because I don't want it to get too thin. But sometimes it's really fun where you can mix up some milk paint a little thicker or even kind of the way it was and put it on with um, like a, uh, not a trowel. I'm losing my mind right now. But those those little tools that they have and you can kind of spread it on and make it kind of thick and kind of kind of crazy. I like I like a little crazy. Crazy is good. So we'll finish up this and then we'll sign off for tonight. So make sure you do the hashtag live, hashtag replay. Like and share to enter to win. We'll be picking our winner very soon. So, so let's see if we get any crackling since we didn't put any shellac on. So we'll see what the milk paint does on its own without doing any shellac. All right. And as you can see, that layering wax bar is already starting to do its thing. It's already resisting that paint. So the paint doesn't stick and what's nice is um, with using the water-based stain this one is then weathered what's nice is you get that realistic stained look but it, it's so pretty so you can you can choose to do contrast you can choose to not have much of a contrast heck if you want to do another nice thing is to mix up the milk paint and not do any shellac or resist or anything and just let it do its thing and it's just a really beautiful finish in fact i have a board that i did of this um tuscan clay that i'll show you and that one just has one coat on there so we'll do a second coat and you can see how it looks and it's just really pretty I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but there is, it is starting to crack and do some chipping. Another fun thing that I found is the Miss Lillian Snow Wax Chalk Paint because it has a sealer in there. That, if you have that down first, that will act as a little bit of, not necessarily resist, but it because it has that sealer in there, you'll get a little bit of cracking and chipping. Not as much as the shellac, but you will get some. So that's a fun thing to play with too. So I'm hoping that you guys will try some of this out and experiment and, you know, it's just paint. If you try something and you don't like it, you paint over it. All right, let's go back and finish this up here and we'll leave. this bit of texture that we've got and some of this cracking oh yeah there the lights picking it up some you can see some texture so uh, that's pretty cool
cool. Oh, there we go. I don't know something's going on with this lighting in here. Here you can see some of that. So that's without the shellac and just using the layering wax bar. So you can kind of see it though, that it is cracking. And then I'm just going to show you one last thing and then we'll, we'll pick a winner and we'll be done. So this is what one coat of that same Tuscan, oops, I've been clipping my board, what the Tuscan clay looks like just over a, um, a plain wood board. Um, and I added a little bit of extra water to it because when you're painting on the bare wood, it tends to kind of keep absorbing and so you end up with it dragging. And so I'll mist it with just a little bit of water and um, just for the, usually just for the top layer and then it's okay. So if you wanted to, you could, um, you can do a paint finish where you can just get a solid coverage and not get really so much of the chipping and cracking and um but give it a really beautiful old world look to it so so we'll go back and we'll use this and we'll just hit it up with the blow dryer just so you can see what the finish looks like and then i'll seal it with some hemp oil and then we'll call it a night See, you can see when it dries because it starts to get this chalky look, kind of a dry look to it once it's once it's dry. And you can see, like, it, because I'm using the heat gun on it, if I wasn't using the heat gun, we wouldn't have gotten any crackling. But I think we got the crackling because I had the heat gun and because I kind of put it on a little thick. So... I don't know if you can see it. I had the heat gun a little bit too close and I burned a little bit of the tips, but no big deal. So what you can also do is you can just kind of take and just go over it a little bit with a 220 and it's really nice and smooth and you can have that finish or you can leave it with a little bit of this texture and you can do your hemp oil on there and then you get more of a truer color. So you can see the difference of what it looks like before it's sealed. And it looks kind of dry and kind of blah. And then you put that hemp oil on it and really work it in. Hemp oil is magic stuff. It's beautiful on reviving wood pieces. So you can see up at the top what it looks like before and what it looks like after the hemp oil. So you just work that in and then you just wipe off the excess. And um, if you're going to be doing it on a piece that's um, that's going to be getting some a little bit more use, 
I would probably end up using the lackluster on it. But for the sides and things on a piece, I like to use this because I just think the finish on it is just so pretty. And um, yeah, and you can even experiment and uh, use a little bit of, um, let's put a little tab on my finger so you can kind of see on the cracks and things. You can even put, use a little bit of um, the glazes with the milk paint too. So have fun, experiment. Let me see if Miss Lillian has picked a winner. I see somebody else says they love hemp oil. There's too many things not to love. Okay, so let's see if we have a winner. Um, oh, we have a winner. So Charlene Gannon is our winner. So you can, Charlene, message Miss Lillian's and you can tell her which color you would like. You get to pick your color and give her your information. So congratulations, Charlene Gannon. And people are asking about my heat gun. So my heat gun, I got it at a garage sale. This was an old Stampin' Up. Sometimes I found one on Marketplace and I found one at a garage sale years ago. But any heat gun will work. You can use a heat gun that you use for um, um, in the garage, you know, with different things. So um, you can use any kind of a, this, it, it, this is called an embossing gun. It was when they, um, when you wanted to emboss stamps and you would put the, um, put the stamp, the pigment ink and then put the um, embossing powder on it, shake off the excess and then hit it with this and it, it would make it um, raised. That's what this is for. So you can find them at the craft stores and things. You can find them on Amazon. You can find everything on Amazon. Except for Miss Lillian's. It won't be on Amazon. <laughs> All right. I think this is going to be it for tonight. I hope you had fun. Make sure, if you have been on, make sure you, um, make sure that you, um, share and like this video so you can tell your friends, oh, I saw this video on using milk paint. You got to watch it. Hopefully, hopefully you learned something and, um, you won't be scared to use it. So I guess that's going to be it for tonight. Um, so bye for now.